Tonight is October the 13th, 2022, and I want to make a short video tonight and talk about one specific thing, and they are mercury vapor rectifiers. I love mercury vapor rectifiers. They are beautiful. Now, here's, here's the purpose, and the, really the only purpose, to, except I'll show you some, uh, some mercury vapor rectifiers actually operating. Big ones, medium-sized ones, and little ones. I have them all, and I use them all. <clears throat> I was on the air today using these back here in the back. I'll show you these in just a second with them all lit up. But the purpose of this is to tell you that it is perfectly okay to use mercury vapor rectifiers in an audio amplifier. Um, what happens is when you get onto some of these forums and you ask, uh, can you use mercury vapor rectifiers and audio amplifiers? I see that happen all the time. A lot of people seem to, you know, be really charmed with them. They have some advantages. Uh, they have some disadvantages, of course. The advantages are they are very powerful, even small ones. See, these are, I think these are called um, 872s. These right here are 866s. I'm going to line them all up for you with high voltage here in a second. And then there's these little bitty guys over here called H16s. I'll just go ahead and turn the H16s on for you briefly so you can see what they look like. Aren't those things beautiful? And of course it's got the VR tubes next to it. Yeah, these are H16s. And I think they uh, can power something like a 450 watt amplifier. They're very powerful. Uh, the voltage drop across them is pretty well constant at about 15 volts regardless of the current within, you know, the rated, as long as you don't exceed the rated current. Um, <clears throat> they do tend to take uh, uh, a low voltage at a reasonably higher current to, uh, to light them up, but I want to tell you something about lighting these tubes up. For example, let's go over here to these 866s. Actually, I think I can light them up for you right now. I've already got this. Uh, let me view it. Yeah. Whoa. Okay. Okay, I'm talking into a dummy load. So you can see these things modulating. And um, the purpose of this is to talk about that thing that Every time somebody asks, "Can I use 860? Can I use mercury vapor rectifiers in my um, audio amplifier?" Somebody will come in there and I'll say, "Oh no, you can't do that because they cause they call they cause hash." Well, they don't have a clue what they're talking about. They mercury vapor rectifiers don't cause hash. That is an absolute false statement, 100% false. See, this thing runs at 4,000 volts. Can you see that? 4,000. When I talk, it uh, modulates a little bit. There's the tube. This thing, uh, it always kind of overwhelms this camera, but you can actually see the plate modulate. And there's the, uh, excuse me. Sorry, 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 sorry. There's the uh, plate current modulating. There's the grid current modulating. But anyway, it's about a, this is about mercury vapor rectifiers. You can definitely use mercury vapor rectifiers in an audio amplifier. I've done it many times. I won't say many, but several times. The hash, and I'm going to show you in an article. Let me turn this thing off. Um, what it's about, sorry I move around so much, but that's just the way i got to do it. Here's a 1937 book that has uh, some really good information about mercury vapor rectifiers. And what it boils down to, and I'll show you in here where it discusses it, is back in the old days, back in the 30s or so, when this stuff came up, uh, the engineers and the builders, you know, a lot of things are built by experimentation. We call it empirically designed. That's the way they make rockets nowadays, you know. They build one and they think it's going to work and they uh, light the fuse and it blows up and they go, oh well, let's, uh, that didn't work. I wonder what went wrong and then they fix it the next time, you know. Uh, I think that is the way they do it. But anyway, what happens, and the reason that this thing called hash came up is if you do not properly, or at least reasonably so, keep the 866 mercury vapor rectifiers away 
from very strong RF sources, here's what happens. Here, here's, here's an article on it. I'm going to read some of it to you. It just says, every precaution should be taken to keep the mercury tube out of intense radio frequency fields because radio frequency oscillations introduce potentials into the gaps between the cathode and the anode of the tube which superimposed upon conditions already existing leads to ionization and changes of current when they're not wanted. If the mercury tube is operating critically, it takes little to produce the necessary ionization which is needed for its operation. This added potential introduced by means of RF currents playing between the electrodes is sufficient to start ionization that is not desired. The tube should likewise be kept out of magnetic fields as such fields have the effect of changing the energies of the electrons and the atoms of mercury vapor by displacing their hypothetical orbits and making certain direction of motion easier than others. Much difficulty in fil filtering the output of the rectifier can be eliminated by isolating the power supply from the transmitter, blah, blah, blah. As long as you don't have them in a transmitter and, and a strong RF field around them, hash doesn't exist. The tube itself does not cause hash. I've also read in another article that I do not have handy at the moment that they improved the something between the cathode and the plate in these MV rectifiers back in the old days uh, to help eliminate that and then the engineers got better and they don't uh, you know they, they got a lot better at uh, isolating uh, building on different chassis and different parts you know keeping the mercury vapor rectifiers and the power supply away from the RF section which only makes sense we know that now Mercury vapor rectifiers in themselves do not cause hash. And I doubt your audio amplifier is going to be around a strong RF source. Now a strong RF source would be something like this guy right here. If I had the mercury vapor rectifiers right over here next to it, you know, or, or just right above or below or, or, or somewhere surrounding it so that the, so that the energy uh, magnetic fields, electromagnetic fields from the tank coils and all could affect it, then it would. But you see, it's down here on a on a different on a different level where the RF does not get into it and everything's fine I've been operating this thing for a long time I'm modulating with my voice now again you can use mercury vapor rectifiers in your audio amplifier now I know somebody's probably going to say well that's insane and of course it is it's absolutely insane you, you could do the same thing with two little diodes the size of a piece of rice, practically, that you can do with these big mercury vapor rectifiers. Oh, I want to mention something else. These rectifiers here, these 866s, use 2.5 volts at 5 amps. And these right here actually are in a voltage doubler, which is a no-no, but I'll discuss that in just a second. But <clears throat> if you don't have 2.5 volt 5 amp transformers, you can use a 5 volt 5 amp transformer. You can put the the uh, filaments in series and you can light them over 5 volts. Everybody's got 5 volt filaments. So you can put them in series and then just take the DC off of where the two filaments connect together. Kind of like a center tap. That works perfectly well. Matter of fact, that's exactly how I do it over here in this one. I'll fire this one up for you in just a second so you can see those uh, those big guys in there. Okay, I know I probably shouldn't say it too many more times because I'm getting redundant, but uh, mercury vapor rectifiers do not cause hash as long as they're not in a strong RF field. And I'm talking about a strong RF field. I'm not talking about your, you know, 10 miles from an AM station. That's not, that's not a strong RF field. I hope this helps. Let me, um, I'll stop here and I've got to change a couple of connections so I can uh, power this one up. You, you got to see these beautiful ones too. Okay, I've got this one hooked up. I've got to reach up here and, and, and put the power to it. These are the uh, the big mercury vapor rectifiers. I just think they're really beautiful. Of course, there's solid state replacements for them, and they work great. But uh, these right here actually power this amplifier up here, which is uh, runs a pair of 812s in it. 
and the, the modulator right here that runs a pair of 4-125s is on its is on its own power supply. But that's all I've got to say about mercury vapor rectifiers. If they are your passion and you want to build audio amplifiers with them, then go for it. It will they will work just fine. And if they make you happy, be careful with them, of course. Be careful with everything. Because you know this stuff will kill you. It is. High voltage is not your friend. Stay safe, my friends, and uh, thanks for watching. I hope this uh, hope this helps and entertains you.